Hi folks. Hey, welcome back to the channel and my shop. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and in this video, I want to talk about Ethernet data networks. And uh, this video stems from a phone call I got today with a guy trying to do something interesting with the cable, which I'll show you in a minute, but never talk about. But uh, let's talk real quick about what Ethernet is and some of the quick basics, so hopefully you have some good understanding about it if you're not familiar with the term. Now, first of all, the term Ethernet, a lot of us have heard the term, but if you don't know what that actually is, it's a language what's referred to as a protocol a computer uses to talk to another computer. And you got to understand when PCs are first developed in the late 70s and early 80s, there is no way to make them talk to each other. So a number of languages were developed. In, in the early 80s, Ethernet really kind of takes off. And by the end of the 1980s, uh, Ethernet's pretty much king uh, out there. So in the term Ethernet, where it actually comes from is interesting because, you know, um, engineers, you know, we're trying to come up with a name for this new uh, language we were developing. And uh, it's interesting, you know, all these networks, a lot of us don't really understand how any of this stuff works. We really don't. Uh, we plug it together. It somehow works. But we have no idea how it's actually doing what it's doing. And it's interesting, a lot of scientists back in the day, when they would not be able to understand or explain something, like we didn't know how light got from the sun to the earth, they used to say, hey, it traveled through the ether. And we don't know. And so uh, it turned out that that kind of was a good name for this because, again, nobody knows how this works necessarily as a general rule, or at least most people don't. We just know it's working. So we call it Ethernet for this network, okay? Now, today, Ethernet is controlled through the IEEE. And the IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, okay? And so if you ever want to figure out how Ethernet does what it does, that's where you're going to go. And uh, they actually got a lot of subcommittees that are working on all kinds of technologies out there today. And the subcommittee that works on Ethernet is called 802, okay? So there's the 802 subcommittee, and we work on Ethernet. And part of that committee is there's a subcommittee called a Part 3, okay? So 802.3, and the latest one is AB, is the subcommittee, is the organization or the area that we're going to go to that tells us how uh, wired Ethernet systems work. Okay, I'm talking about wired over, you know, category cabling or something like that. Now, there are, of course, wireless versions of Ethernet, and the, the subcommittee that works on that is the 802.11. And we've had a number of variations of wireless systems over the years, too. We started with B and then A and G and then N nowadays. So these are the two subcommittees you might want to look into. This is the wireless and this is the wired versions. And again, they, they tell us how Ethernet actually does do what it does, okay? Now, a very simplistic answer as to how it does what it does is Ethernet, what it basically is going to do is going to take whatever file or data that needs to be sent, and it will bust that information up into little bitty packets and then send those packets across a, a network. And uh, when they create the packet, they create a source and a destination address on the packet so it knows where it's going and who's supposed to get it, okay? And where it came from, right? So uh, it's all these little packets. And I'm sure most of you all have probably picked up, you know, turn on a computer, you open up to a website, and you get part of the website, then another part, and then eventually the entire thing popped up. What's well, actually all these packets being sent is uh, what you're actually watching, okay? So it's all about making all these little packets, okay? Now, uh, when you look at the changes in Ethernet and uh, the migration of it, uh, we started back in the mid-'80s, I should say, with 10 base T, Okay. And when I, someone says to me, I have a 10 base T data network, I automatically know you're talking Ethernet because that's an Ethernet term. Now, the T here stands for twisted pair wire or category cable. We used to use coax at the very beginning, but uh, by the end of the 80s and early in the 90s, it's all pretty much category cable. Uh, base means baseband. We won't get into what it means, but the 10 is interesting because it tells us how much information can pass through that Ethernet system. In this case, it's 10 megabits per second is what the information carrying capacity of the system is. And uh, that's a bit, uh, a bit is a one or a zero to a computer, so uh, 10 million a second. It actually uh, sounds like a lot today, but it's really not. It's kind of slow. 10 base T was king in the late 80s and early, early 90s until we came out with fast Ethernet. Now, fast Ethernet is 100 base T, okay? Again, we call it fast Ethernet. And... Um, uh, was very, very much king for a lot of years, okay? And what's interesting about these systems from t uh, 100 megabits and down, if you look at the schematic over here, what you're going to see here is, and it says 10 base T, 4-wire Ethernet. At 110 base T, they only use four of the eight actual wires in the cable. Uh, you'll see pins 1 and 2 and 3 and 6 make up the two pairs. Now, 
Um, uh, one of those pairs is a transmit, and one of them is a receive. So that's kind of what's going on there. And so technically, at those uh, 10 and 100 base T networks, we're not using all the cables. And the reason I had decided to make this quick video is I had someone call me up who has one category cable in a room. Uh, they don't want to throw another router or switch or something in that room to split it out to two different PCs. He basically wants to use one wire to hook up two PCs back to a router. And basically what you, I told him you had to do is that since the other pairs are not being used, you can use them for something else. And technically you could put a phone across them and other things. We don't like you doing this kind of stuff, but you could. So what he has to do is on either end of the cable, split out the pairs that are not being used. And at the outlet in the room, take those two pairs and terminate them on pins one and two and three and six in the second jack in the room. And this is without no splicing of the cable. I'm going to just take those pairs and run them over to another jack nearby. And we'll do the, basically the same thing at the other end of the cable where they plug into a router. And then we would take a two separate patch cords to plug uh, those, those wires back into a router itself. Uh, so technically you could do it. Now, um, we don't like you doing this because the next rung up the ladder here is Gigabit Ethernet. And uh, that came out in the late 90s, and it's been pretty king now for a long time now. Uh, the systems are running at 10 gig, which is 10,000 megabits. And you'll find the upper data guys in copper are running the 40 all the way out to 100 gigabit range today. But 1,000, partly in here on beyond, partly how the system gets faster is it starts using all the wires and the cable. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. I've seen the migration of all of these in my lifetime. And uh, I think I'm going to be around long enough to see gigabit Ethernet really pretty common in the, in the homes today. Because what is your high-speed Internet, which has always been the bottleneck? We can always run at much faster speed inside the home through these little, you know, 100 base T network routers or switches and stuff. Uh, and, you know, 100 base T NIC cards. But the, the, uh, the bottleneck has always been the Internet line coming in. Now, most of us on Internet speed is somewhere in this 10 megabit range and sometimes a little lower sometimes a little higher, and of course they bust up between what, how fast you can download versus how much you can send information. So uh, everybody gets a little different speed in their home, it seems like. And uh, can you get upwards of 100 megabits from your current service provider? And the answer is yes, you can, and you can always get a little more speed from folks if you want to pay for it, obviously. Uh, and, but today that's not too common. For us, most people in our households, we're in that 10 to 20 megabit range probably. Okay, Now, I don't know if you guys follow what Google's doing in Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri, but I live in that town, and I tell you what's very interesting is Google is, I think, trying in a way to leapfrog all the other server providers who are providing network speeds or internet speeds in this range to most people. Um, they're bringing fiber to every home and every business in those two cities, and Google is going to be the first metropolitan super high-speed network in the United States, and they're going to be offering gigabit. And uh, if you read uh, Google stuff today, you, I'm hearing they're going to offer a service for 120 bucks a month that will include gigabit Ethernet, a basic cable package, and a basic phone package. So it'll be interesting to see how they compete with all the cable TV and uh, other service providers that are out there. And would the other service providers be able to give us gigabit? The answer to that is yes, they can, uh, but they're going to have to do a ton of work that our systems to get up and uh, be able to offer this kind of speed. So I think Google, in a lot of ways, is trying to beat them to the next corner. And so uh, I, I don't know how, how soon gigabit Ethernet is going to be a common thing in people's homes. might be another handful of years, might be 10 years down the road. It's interesting, uh, but uh, it's from what I know, the systems aren't getting any slower. They do nothing but get faster and faster and faster. So uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Now, for Ethernet today, and we want to distribute that inside of our homes, again, you're going to get this uh, Ethernet connection from a service provider running into your home somehow. And depending on if it's coming from a phone guy or a cable guy or somebody else, uh, they normally are going to go through what's referred to as a modem of some device, okay? And that modem uh, will take the information and split out the data from it for you, okay? So this is data coming out of the modem, and that's your high-speed internet line, and you'll hear it referred to it as a WAN connection or wide area network, okay? And that will plug into my router that will now tie all the computers into that internet connection, okay? And one of the ports on your computer, on your router, We'll probably say WAN, and that's the connection you're going to run from your high-speed Internet coming into that router. Now, that router does a lot of things, and basically uh, it 
controls the flow of information in and out of the building to the internet. And uh, we could plug really just about anything with an IPA addressable item into this router. I mean, we can obviously plug printers uh, or, or PCs or whatever else we want to make part of the network. We can certainly tie into this. As a matter of fact, you can stack. Uh, these where I get to plug one of these into maybe a switch or a hub and feed even more devices. So you can actually grow one Ethernet node up to 256 addressable items. And uh, I don't know if anybody has 256 addressable items in a home today. But, uh, you know, because, you know, look at your laptops and your tablets and your PC, I mean, your uh, cell phones and things like that. Uh, but in the future, I think you're going to see that that number is going to grow quite a bit in the next uh, handful, 10 years or 20 years. Who knows? Uh, but pretty big. We can go pretty big. And uh, any of these, if the router itself is not wireless as well, and you can get a version of this as wireless as well, so any wireless device can communicate. And if not, I can run a connection out to a wireless access point where I can basically put a wireless switch or something out there that would then uh, offer wireless system throughout my home. So you'll find in most cases we're doing a little bit of both. Uh, because we like to get on the back porch or deck or up in the kitchen, and we don't have a, a separate connection inside that. So wireless is always an option, uh, although with wireless systems, uh, it's never as fast as wired portion of it, uh, uh, and there's always security questions with wireless systems, but they're really convenient to hook up. And you'll find that Ethernet today is pretty much a plug-and-play thing. You plug all these things together, it normally figures out how to communicate amongst itself. So it's actually gotten pretty simple. And uh, I think on another video coming up, I will actually uh, show you actually how to hook up a wireless router or something to a network so uh, you have a little bit better understanding of that. So, hey, there you go. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal. Thanks for coming. I'm Ron. Uh, I'll see you on the next one.